Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, just spread out. <laughs> How much truth can you handle? How much advice are you willing to listen to? Uh, even when it's good, sound, and biblical. Do you reach a, a point where it becomes repetitive, so you just kind of tune out and, and stop listening? Or, or is it so intense that, that it becomes too much to handle, or, or even to contemplate? As a, as a father, it seems that I've spent the last 25 years constantly offering up warnings to my boys. Only date Christian girls. Don't do drugs. Read your Bible, go to church, pray, don't hang out with those who, who may get you into trouble. You know, work hard, be honest, control your temper, don't argue with an idiot, be respectful, don't drink and drive, be careful how you, how you reply to insults. Don't compromise your faith. Remember who and whose you are. Trust God, not man. And don't believe everything that you hear. Question everything. Don't be deceived. And the truth will always lead you to God. Yes. On and on and on. You know, I want what's best for my boys. I want them to be safe. I want them to keep their heads on straight. I want them to make the right decisions. I want them to recognize right from wrong, good from evil. I want them to be wise and choose good. I don't want them to have a worldly wisdom, but godly. Yet there are times when when I feel like they just don't want to hear it. Or perhaps I, I've just overloaded them with, with too many caution flags. You know, I, I don't want them to suffer because of bad decisions. Maybe they need to gain wisdom the hard way. And that's how I, I feel sometimes about the people of hope. My prayer for each of you is to be wise and discerning, not led astray from the truth by, by human cunning, deceitfulness, or worldly desires. But again, I can only speak and preach biblical truth. I can't make you hear, and I can't make you choose wisely. You know, in our Old Testament text from 1 Kings chapter 3, we come to the, the story of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. And his reign, it began with such hope and promise. Solomon loved the Lord and, and had an upright heart and walked in faithfulness. And in our reading, we're told that, that as he slept, the Lord appeared to him in a dream and, and God offered him a gift. Ask what I shall give you. You know, I wonder what you or I would have asked for under the same circumstances today. Health, wealth, power, prosperity, perhaps for ourselves or for our kingdom. But Solomon didn't choose any of those. But of all the things that he could have asked for, he asked for and he sought wisdom. He desired the power to, to know between right and wrong so he could rule justly and in such a way that God would, would be pleased. And the people would benefit. And God granted him wisdom. And people from all the world came to hear and learn from him. He knew what was right and how to apply that wisdom in real life situations. And we've all heard the story and know it of the two women who, who claimed to be a child's mother. And how he decreed that the baby be cut in two. Knowing that the real mother would never allow her child be killed. In, in the book of Proverbs, in which he wrote the greater part, is so beautifully gives practical advice on how people, especially young people, should think about the lives which lay ahead of them. 
Sadly, though, Solomon's story didn't end as well as it started. As he increased in wealth and honor, he who was wise became a fool. You know, Solomon enlarged his kingdom through diplomacy. He took many wives who believed in false gods. And they turned his heart, and he began to forget the God who loved him. You know, the great king who built the Lord's temple in Jerusalem also built shrines to pagan deities, including Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. The very same Solomon whose wisdom saved a child and put that child with its rightful mother was now building temples where children were sacrificed to pagan gods. The Solomon who rose to the, the pinnacle of wisdom fell to the deepest depths of folly. Solomon became just another corrupt ruler. Israel needed more. A greater king, a better son of David, who would reign with wisdom and establish a kingdom that would never fall. Israel needed not just a wise king, but a king who could save its people from the folly of sin. In our gospel for today, today from Luke 2 reveals to us the, the true son of David born in Bethlehem as a boy who increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus appeared in our, in our reading filled with wisdom beyond his years. You know the story how Joseph and Mary and the rest of the family spent a day heading home and, until they realized that Jesus wasn't in their group? And then they rushed back and spent three days trying to find him. And where did they find him? In the temple with the great teachers. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Here is hope. Here is wisdom and a mystery. Jesus, a boy, grows in wisdom and stature, and he himself is the wisdom from on high. He is the eternal wisdom through whom the world was made. And Jesus showed in his life throughout Galilee and Judea to all of Israel that wisdom as he preached and as he taught them. And Jesus also shows us that same wisdom through his holy word. Today as we hear, as we read, and as we study the holy scriptures. You know, as we look back to Solomon in, in his later years, we see that some of his wisdom was given to him the hard way. He wrote in Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He had his focus misdirected from God to those things that, that the world considered important. What he came to know, and each of us needs to know, as well as that what the world considers important isn't. Kingdoms rise and fall. As do kings, wealth comes and goes. You can't take it with you. The wise man dies just the same as the fool. We are mortal creatures, and having come from the dust to the dust, we will return. Wealth and honor are fleeting and temporary, and death will take both the prince and the pauper. The only thing that ultimately matters is the fear of the Lord, the trust in God, who alone can save. The world is foolish. It is so caught up in the things that will not last. And sometimes even we close our eyes to the warnings. And, and like Solomon, our focus is misdirected by a pretty face, compromise, or the sparkle of gold. Jesus, the wisdom of God, said, Do not be anxious about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body, what you will put on it. Is not life more than food, and the body more than raiment? Jesus our Lord himself offers the true and the final wisdom that Solomon sought. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the other stuff will be added in the life to come. Seek the heavenly treasure. 
follow the way of heavenly wisdom. And Jesus is that treasure. He is our wisdom. The true son of David, who by the folly of the cross saved us from our foolish ways. Our Lord offers to us a kingdom better than Solomon's or any earthly king. The kingdom of God will never fade or fall, and the devil himself cannot prevail against it. The kingdom of Christ brings eternal joy and takes away all our fears, even the fear of death. You know, how often have, have we, like Solomon, been led astray, seeking worldly wisdom and been made fools? How often have we forgotten or failed to listen to the wisdom of our Father? And today we're reminded that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Hear the word of wisdom. Make the most of your time here for the sake of the kingdom of God and for the proclamation of the gospel. You know, all the things of this world will slip away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And the gospel is the word of eternal life. Thanks be to God who gave us his son. Thanks be to the son, the good king, and our true wisdom, who through his death and resurrection has saved us. Thanks be to the spirit who through the gospel made us his people that we might live forever in his kingdom. Thank you for making us wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, in his holy name.